This is Joseph Drust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in, ask, what does regroup by edges do? So to start off, I have ZBrush loaded up, and the question is asking about the regroup by edges button that's located over here under the polygroups tab. So what does this regroup by edges button do? So as an example, with my PolyMesh 3D star here, I'm just gonna go through and first convert this to a quick cube. So I'm gonna go back to the tool palette over here. I'm gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom to the initialize tab and then open that up. And then in here for the X res, Y res, and Z res, I'm just gonna come through and type in 100. So I'm just gonna max all these out. So 100 in all the sliders there. And then I'm just gonna click this Q cube button. It's going to take that PolyMesh 3D and now convert it to a quick cube. And if I activate my polyframes here, you can see this is the result. So it's just created a cube and it's divided it up, increasing the spans for each side by 100. So with my mesh looking like this, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to turn off line on my polyframes option too, so I can just see the polygroups. And I just want to first establish one solid polygroup across the entire mesh. So I'm going to go back to the polygroup area over here and I'm just going to click auto groups. And since there was only one geometry island for the subtool, it's only going to give me one polygroup across the entire mesh. So now that I have a model such as this, so it's been tessellated, so it has a decent amount of topology, it also has some harsh edges established in it. If I come over here and now I click this regroup by edges, you're going to see that it's going to look at the edges of this model and it's going to give a new polygroup to those edges. So if you use a cube, like the one I just created using the initialize menu and the quick cube option, if I come over here and just simply click regroup by edges, you're gonna get this result. So it's gone through and it's looked at the harsh edges on the model, and then it's given those edges a new polygroup. Now after you have this polygroup established on these edges, you can now use things like the polish by groups option over here underneath the deformation panel. And this will allow you to come through and start getting kind of bevel effects on meshes. So you can see I just took that cube, I've grouped it by those edges, and now I've just applied a polish by groups. And since all those edges were a new polygroup, then it's come through and it's allowed me to polish just those areas, and I'm getting this kind of smooth effect. Now, this process of regrouping by edges also works really well with Dynamesh models. So I'm going to open up Lightbox here. And in here, I'm going to navigate to the jewelry area right here. And then in here, I'm going to select the jewelry signet ring. I just load that in really quick. Now with this mesh here, I can come through and now also regroup the edges of this model. So I'm gonna go back down to the tool polygroup area and open that up and locate that regroup by edges here. And so if I click it, you see this is the result I'm gonna get initially. So what I need to do now is come over here to this edge sensitivity slider and just enter in a new value. So I'm gonna try 0.5 and now click regroup by edges. And you'll see it's gone through and it's looked at the topology of the mesh, found those edges, and it's now giving me a new polygroup around those areas. So now with this, I could come through and use that deformation polish by groups option again, or I could even go to geometry and then go say to the edge loop area. And now if I click the panel loops option here, it's gonna go through and look at those edge groups. And now I'm gonna get this kind of effect going on. So a lot of things you can use after regrouping some edges with a different polygroup. So the regroup by edges function is going to look at the sculptural edges on your model and then apply a new polygroup to those areas. You just wanna make sure you have enough topology to support the polygroups. So if you do it on a really low resolution model, you may not get the results you're looking for. So just make sure that your model is divided up a little bit before you apply the function. So if you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.